Before we begin, thank you very much to Kira T for joining the Patreon campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the con the contribution. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports this channel and thinks that my daily content is worth dropping a buck or two a month to keep it going. Uh, really do appreciate that. Uh, you are legitimately the reason I can keep up this insane pace that I should not be doing. Uh, on a separate note, uh, if you want to follow me and you don't, and you want to actually avoid the cesspool that is Twitter, I don't blame you. Uh, Blue Sky, the alternative created by the people who created Twitter in the first place, is now publicly open. You don't need an invite code. You can just go to the Blue Sky website, sign up, and then follow TJ Omega. I'm as easy to find as I always am. So please go there. I, I really want to use it more. I just don't have a whole lot of followers there to justify like going over to a different website. So uh, yeah, follow me there. Uh, once the numbers are up and, you know, once I see you there, I will talk to you there. I'm really hoping it plays out because I really want an alternative to Twitter, please. We're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about the 40th anniversary of Transformers. This is one of those days where I just, I turned my phone on before I got out of bed and just smiled because my day's content was just handed to me on a silver platter. It's beautiful. I love these days. Hasbro did a Transformers Tuesday drop of pretty much all of the plans for the 40th anniversary and a lot of their partner plans, too. We found out a ton of stuff that's coming out this year, so we're going to go over it today because if we wait till the news roundup to cover any of this, it's going to be a very, very long news roundup, and I don't want to do that to anybody. So we are going to focus on the 40th anniversary announcements today, uh, and this starts off with the usual stuff like... There's fluff in here we're not going to cover. They mentioned the Skybound comics. They mentioned Omega Prime. We don't need to talk about that stuff. Nothing new. Um, we do want to mention that, like Thrilling 30, they are plastering the anniversary logo on everything. Over 40 distinct Hasbro Transformer anniversary figures will be available across this year-long celebration. Uh, which is just to say, we're putting the anniversary logo on a bunch of toys this year. Uh, they announced a couple toys in particular. Uh, we'll get to those at the very end. Um, however, uh, they did mention that uh, um, in March, Pulse will be kicking out the 40th anniversary with fan stream, with a fan stream and uh, weekly fan-focused content. So apparently Transformers Tuesday is going to be a little bit more consistent. Um, there is one reveal they did off-site that we're going to go ahead and talk about because it does play into this whole like big anniversary reveal day. And that is Legacy United Sandstorm. They're actually dropping Leader Class Sandstorm, the next Triple Changer. And I gotta be honest, this turned out way better. Way better than I assumed. I mean, for starters, look at the helicopter mode. Where is... Where's the dune buggy in this helicopter? This just looks like a helicopter. I do see a little bit of the wheel under the front, and that's literally it. I can't tell where the rest of the vehicle mode is. It's weird. We do see the, the rescue cage that they are using to bulk out the price point, similar to Blitzwing's Hulk hands. The accessory makes a lot more sense, but we, I, we will admit it's a very small and very thin accessory compared to the other two, so budgetary limitations hitting a little bit hard on this one. I will say it's better implemented, and it does come with a working winch, apparently. So they actually put in a, a winch gimmick, which is kind of rare, kind of cool to see. We take a look at the vehicle mode. Uh, I keep saying the vehicle mode. Uh, we take a look at the dune buggy mode. Where is the helicopter? Where did the helicopter go? Where did those wheels come from? This is an incredibly impressive engineering job, if you ask me. I see where the front of the helicopter might be visible if you look at it from behind, but... Really, they've done a really spectacular job of getting both vehicle modes just look dead solid without exposing the other one. Um, yeah, and the roll in the, the, the rescue cage becoming the roll bar that's genius. That's a really smart use. So, I'm, I'm excusing that, even though it's smaller and like less, less, you know, uh, less worth bulking out the price point for, I will excuse it because that's a really good use. And then the robot is spot on to the toy. Like, now we will admit, like, the reason why 
we we the reason why we know the sandstorm sandstorm is like getting away with looking so accurate and like so clean in both vehicle modes is because he has always been the triple changer whose robot mode suffers to make everything work because he's all backpack. That was true of the original toy, so I'm not going to give this toy any guff for being accurate to his original design. More curious why they went with the toy head, not the cartoon head, outside of, like, potentially saving the animation head for a second release, because what else are you going to do with this? Like, really? <laughs> But it is a very cool one. It's a great addition to the Triple Changer Leader Class figures. Probably the best one we've seen so far, in my opinion. So, really looking forward to getting that one in hand. And I love the fact that no leaker got their hands on this. This is the first time we've seen it. It's Hasbro doing the, the, doing the announcement. Not some random YouTuber who stole it out of, uh, out of an Asian factory. Uh, let's move on to other announcements. On the music side, they announced that the 40, the, for the 40th anniversary, the soundtrack, the vinyl soundtrack to the original cartoon would be re-released with a few bonus tracks and a few uh, uh, remastered elements to it, which is cool for the people who missed out on it the first time. Uh, there's, you know, vinyl collecting is a huge thing, so it's always good to see that this is going to be available again. It's also going to be available digitally. So you'll actually be able to hear a lot of that a little bit easier because I don't own a record player, but I would really like to listen to all the all like the vintage music the way like you know uh, like the way originally intended, you know just the music. I would love to, I would love to give it a listen. So nice to know that's going to be available. Uh, similarly, in the music front, uh, J Lab is releasing a set of headphones for the for the anniversary. Uh, there's going to be multiple models available. Uh, they will be available in Autobot and Decepticon stylings. These look photoshopped. <laughs> uh, by the way, that Autobot logo is in no way, shape, or form like correctly pers in perspective. <laughs> but it gives you an idea of what they will be releasing. kind of bugs me because I just got a set of wireless headphones for Christmas. And now a new, now like Transformer wireless headphones are on the way. I'm like, ah. But oh well, um, yeah. There, no announcement of like uh, when this is hitting, but cool that are coming out. Uh, apparently, we're going uh, doing earbuds as well too. So, if you want to rock your transformers while you listen to your your uh, brand new uh, digital version of the original soundtrack, that will be a thing. Uh, let's move into clothing, shall we? A company called Mad Engine has released a brand new wave of T-shirts for the 40th anniversary. The press release mentioned that they are available now on Amazon.com. As of recording this video, they aren't. <laughs> I looked. I looked at their page. I just plain searched on Amazon. There's no mention of them. I can't find them. Uh, so they'll probably be available later today or possibly tomorrow. It won't take long. Uh, in any case, the shirts kind of range from just basic logo stuff like this to uh, bringing up old, like, classic art, some uh, packaging art, some uh, comic books for, like, classic Marvel covers and pages. And that's the kind of stuff I'm really more excited for than just, like, basic 40th anniversary logo stuff. I do really like that, uh, that like, they're using, like, the, uh, the artwork from the Marvel run. Um, we just lost one of the artists from, from those books. So I'm kind of hoping some of his artwork is immortalized in some, in some of this. Uh, but then you have things like this where they just kind of got a lot of the vintage box art of the characters. And we're basically, I guess we're just told throw them together and make whatever. Cause this is like the weirdest random assortment of choices. You've got road buster in there. You've got sandstorm who's only, who just became relevant today. Uh, one Predacon, one Constructicon, one Aerial Bot. Hubcap is in there. Hubcap. Not Bumblebee. Hubcap is in there. Right next to his repaint, by the way. It's a weird choice. It's like it's like they were only given like a handful of artwork to work with and, and just like threw them together by random. It, it's weird really weird choice like i know they had the optimus because they used the optimus art for a different shirt i don't know why they i don't know why i don't know why these are some of the weirdest ones um so there's one or two that might interest me 
Uh, they're affordable shirts, by the way. They're like 20, 25 bucks. You know, basic, basic printed pop culture shirt price. Nothing too extravagant. So it's possible. It's possible. Let's hope something else comes up that's a little bit more interesting. Um, interesting goes to Roosevelt's who do like upper, like higher end pop culture shirts, you know, like nice button up, like casual Friday at the office type shirts, but with pop culture all over prints. These are the kind of shirts that run like 70 bucks. So very nice material, very nice print quality, not something for your average collector. So they announced that they are producing new apparel for Transformers, but they have not actually revealed it yet, so who knows exactly what that's going to look like. Maybe that will randomly use Hubcap as well. Maybe this May 2024 is just the year of Hubcap. You never know. On the toy end, they did mention Robosyn again with its uh, sequel to flagship Optimus Prime. Here's the, here's the exact phrasing. Um, with the launch of its most anticipated robot sequel since the flagship Optimus Prime, which kind of implies that flagship Optimus Prime is a sequel. It's not. It's the original. Um, apparently not as anticipated. Apparently more anticipated than Grimlock. I know. I found the wording funny more than anything. We know that Megatron's on the way. They made mention of it. They mentioned Jada Toys, who are doing some new Transformer mashups across figures that they have already done in production. So we're getting repaints of existing cars that they have done. Starting with an Ecto-1 inspired Optimus Prime. We've seen this a few times as an actual transforming Optimus Prime. Um, it, it just hits that perfect little 80s collaboration of like super popular movie franchise, super popular animation franchise. Really cool mashup to see. What's cool, what's more interesting, is they're flipping it. And they're turning their Ecto-1 into Optimus Prime colors, which is fascinating because I've never actually seen the Ecto-1 in anything except the classic white and red. This is cool. This is cool. It's weird, but it's cool. You know, it kind of makes me want them to redo Ectotron in these colors now. So that's coming up as well. Cool to see. Super 7 is still going to continue with the Transformer license. Uh, we are getting brand new reactives, brand new Super Cyborg releases, and a brand new set of blind boxes. Not mentioned was Transformers Ultimates, which I find is a somewhat interesting omission. You know, they are mixed reaction, at, if I'm being generous. They are commonly found at the clearance section of your favorite online toy shop. No surprise that they are not on the docket for 2024. Uh, aside from ones they probably announced and haven't released yet because they take forever to actually uh, come up with the toys that they they advertise. But yeah, we're getting more of these. We're getting more of these. Uh, I've had my issues with Super 7. I'm not huge on their style and aesthetic. I'm not huge on the price that these uh, reactives are sold for considering they're just, you know, seven-piece toys you know, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I don't begrudge anyone for enjoying them. I do have a couple myself, but they're very specifically chosen. Funk. Speaking of uh, speaking of speaking of toys uh, that I have issue with, uh, Funko is announced that this summer we will be getting more Transformer-based Funko product. So that is that partnership is continuing as well. I tried getting in, I tried collecting the Transformer line of these, and then once they started putting some of my favorite characters in as NFT garbage, I just, I was out. There's physical versions of those, but because they're tied to the NFT giveaway nonsense, uh, they are super expensive, and uh, I, I can't be bothered. Like, it just kind of ruined the whole thing for me to release a few that way. I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of done on the Funko Pop thing. I'm just kind of done. Um, here's one that I never got into, however. Uh, Figpin announced that they're redoing their uh, their XL pins. So they're six inch tall line of pins, and they're doing it with their Transformer designs. I don't. I understand pin collecting. It was never for me. I don't understand the gigantic pin collecting. I don't know why anyone would want a pin that is six inches tall, because it's too big to put on anything in your daily life i'm hesitant to even think like maybe a convention bag and that's about it um 
and even if you have like a pin board for your collection, this would take up the space of like 10 other pins. You'd have to, I'd have to really love pin collecting and I have to really love a certain Transformer character to get that. But for the pin collectors out there, the XLs are returning and they're, they're going to be the Transformer cast. So keep an eye out on those. The New Zealand Mint announced that they are doing a silver coin of the original cover of Transformers Issue 1, which is an interesting choice considering, uh, I would argue it's not the most famous cover. I think uh, Shockwave's uh, Transformers Are All Dead is probably the most famous cover. This one is more infamous than famous because it's a very weirdly drawn, gigantic Optimus Prime. It is a random child and father just watching in the background like like it's some like war memorial uh historical documentary thing it's a super odd cover it's a super odd cover uh but you know what um at least at least at least having it as a the fact that it's being immortalized in a silver coin is kind of interesting kind of interesting three zero announced that they are going to be doing new uh, animation inspired decos on three other MDLX figures Optimus, Bumblebee, and Megatron. I have spoken highly of these in the past. I do have the Optimus Prime, and it is a buttery smooth action figure. Uh, very, very nice. Very, very nice piece of, uh, of merchandise. Um, now, getting it in more animation accurate colors is interesting. I'm kind of curious how they're going to look. I'm more curious about how that's going to look on the Bumblebee because the Bumblebee in Sculpt is decidedly going against the grain as far as G1 style goes. It's a weird head design for Bumblebee. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping like maybe I'm, I'm kind of hoping for a head retool because I, I don't think animation colors are going to work on it unless the head is redone. Probably a lofty expectation, but... Kind of cool that they're giving people another shot at these in somewhat more familiar color schemes. We'll see how that turns out. It should be interesting to see like how animation accurate colors look on their like heavily detailed and tech greebel figures. Dynamite Entertainment is doing a round of uh, collect collectible trading cards, which is fun because they're kind of doing it the same way as like like modern TCGs because they're, they're doing it with like foil print cards, uh, you know, and things like that, like rare cards in each pack. It's, you know, that kind of thing. Um, they look fun enough. Again, they're reusing classic Marvel artwork as well as packaging artwork, which would be cool to have in card based form. Uh, like there's part of me that wants some of that packaging artwork is like full blown posters, but I'll take a trading card of it. Uh, what's fun about this is there's a few ways they're releasing these. Uh, they're doing it by the pack. They're doing it by, like, a collector box that's, like, multiple packs and, like, extra foils. And then they're just doing this box, which seems to be literally the entire 100 and, you know, 17 card, you know, like, what, like, whatever, you know, it, it seems like they're just doing every card. It seems like it's every card. Which is a weird way, because it kind of seems like the defeat of the point. Like, because, like, the point of collect, like, like, the point of cards, the point of packaged cards like this is to keep people buying more and more and getting duplicate after duplicate just because they are chasing the last few cards they need. Um, that seems to be a counterpoint to this product. So, uh, I mean, it's convenient. Don't get me wrong, it's convenient. If I'm going to go for any one of these products, it's going to be for this one. Uh, it's just an odd way. It's just an odd way of doing it. But I guess you cut out a lot of the guesswork that way, at least. Uh, Monroe Automotive announced a collaboration with Transformers. Uh, this is a car repair company. Uh, and the, advert like the, the press release uh, mentioned automotive service and tire providers will offer Transformers-themed auto service packages now through March 31st. Transformer-themed auto service packages. What, is someone going to dress as Optimus Prime and change my oil? Um, I looked on their website. They actually have it up. It's just promotions. <laughs> it's literally just promotions. Buy some tires and get some money off on your purchase, thanks to Transformers. Um, you know, get you know, get Valvoline to refuel your 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 oil in your car, and. Yay, Transformers. I don't know what the point of that one is. There's apparently giveaways or something attached to it. Please don't tell me there's some toy that only comes if I get my tires replaced. Please don't tell me that's a thing. 
I don't know. They haven't announced anything beyond that. So we don't know what the giveaways are. We don't know what the extra like little incentives are. It's just like literally it's just a promotional stunt. Um, they announced Earthspark Season 2. Uh, this is an old poster, so it's not debuting March 3rd. Don't get ahead of me. Uh, but I love hearing this, uh, especially for those who, uh, the last time I talked about Earthspark, just ranted in the comments section. No, it's poorly written, woke garbage. It's obviously getting canceled. Just because you don't personally like it doesn't mean it's bad and doesn't mean it's unpopular. Season 2 is uh, greenlit. Uh, we are getting it this year. I'm excited for it because I love this show and think it is highly underrated. Um, I'm looking forward to what they do because they opened things wide open with the season one finale. It has only good places to go from here. So I'm excited for that. Alongside this, they also mentioned, you know, the obvious Transformers 1 CGI animated movie coming September 13th. But they also mentioned that we are getting a episode of The Masked Singer inspired by Transformers. I mean, are they really going to be singing the Transformers theme song on The Masked Singer? Is someone going to come out dressed as Bumblebee? Is are they actually is someone going to sing The Touch? Please tell me tell me tell me some random D-list celebrity desperately hanging on to relevancy is going to sing The Touch dressed up as like a flamingo or something. I would love that. That would be amazing. So that's pretty much all the partner things. And like already well, we've seen, like we've had so much to go over. They announced so many things as part of this press release, but Hasbro also dropped two very fascinating projects on us at the same time. And these shouldn't be available. These should be available pretty soon. They are, Marvel comic book accurate releases. So we are getting a shockwave done up in a, uh, like these boxes are Velcro folded. Like you can actually open up the cover and see the figure inside. Uh, but the, the box art is based on, yeah, the, the aforementioned most famous comic book cover for transformers shockwaves are all dead cover. That's the box. And the figure itself is Siege Shockwave done up in Marvel comic book colors. I could do maybe for a little bit more. I remember Marvel Shockwave having a little bit more red to his purple, but it's whatever. Uh, it is extensively decoed in order to recreate the shading and the print style on, Mar on like the old comic book issues. You can not only see the black where the shading is really heavy, you can also see the white spotted areas that they used to have to do to lighten up colors in during the print. Uh, back when like they only had a few colors to work with at a time. This looks fascinating. What's also fascinating is there's no extra greeble to it. There's no additional armor chunks. Uh, like nothing to make him the big super ship. He's just kind of a submarine. He's just a he's just he's just kind of a submarine. With feet that weren't folded down, by the way. Uh, but no, this is how Takara is doing their Shockwave release in the upcoming like multi-pack. So, kind of surprised Hasbro would release their own as well. Uh, so, that's the thing. It also comes with an Optimus head. <laughs> this is recreating something else from the comic books. So, uh, it's a fun little accessory to throw in. You're not getting the armor bits, but you are getting a little Optimus pedestal to recreate one of those scenes. Uh, this package is going for $39.99, so Shockwave is going for Voyager price, and then you're paying an extra 5 bucks for Prime Skull. That's not too bad. I'd pay 5 bucks for Optimus' Skull. Uh, so, uh, that's the Shockwave, but if you're going to do Shockwave as a Marvel Comics release, you gotta do Grimlock. You gotta do Grimlock. You gotta have the pair. So, Grimlock, again, a classic comic book cover. Uh, for the front of his box, and this is the Studio Series 86 box, uh, uh, Studio Series 86 figure in box, and again, like, this is a very nice packaging style, very nice packaging style, I'm very happy with how this looks, Grimlock himself looks really, really freaking cool, uh, I, I'm glad we finally have a release that does away with that translucent thing on the chest that looked terrible, like the blue gives him a little bit of uh, interesting like flourish to him. Uh, also just great in general that this figure is getting another run because the aftermarket price on 86 Grimlock is insanity. 
So it's cool that there's going to be another way of getting these. You can see how extensively decoed this is. Aside from all the shading that's been done on him, it looks like the inside of his wings, his kibble wings, have all been painted jet black to kind of diminish their vis their appearance. That's kind of fascinating. That does kind of play into how Grimlock looked in uh, the comic books a little bit. He does come with his crown, he comes with his gun, and he comes with the swords. He comes with three of the Dinobot swords. I mean, if there was one taped to his mouth, he would look like Zorro. Uh, I intentionally pronounced the character's name the way the four kids dub did it the last time I made that joke. And uh, what I learned is don't challenge One Piece fans. Uh, they will go after you. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's Zorro. I'm aware. Uh, but And this is not the correct three-sword thing he does. But it's cool to know that the, 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 the Dinobot swords exist. Now, keep in mind, I don't think some obscure random release like this is going to be the place where we are going to be expected to buy them from. Uh, oh, by the way, T-Rex mode that just has them stuck all around him. Um, I am actually, like, I am fully expecting, I am fully expecting these parts to become available uh, when Swoop is released. Because keep in mind, Swoop, to be in scale with the other Dinobots, has to be a little bit smaller. So there is going to be some room in his budget to include some additional accessories. I expect that to be how uh, they expect us to get swords for all the 86 Dinobots. Could be wrong. Uh, but it's just nice to know the molds exist, so, like, yes, Hasbro's apparently heard some demands, and they will be available in one way or another. Uh, so, this heavily painted Grimlock with a ton of extra accessories is going to retail $59.99, so a little bit more than the Studio Series release, but also about 100 bucks cheaper to 200 bucks cheaper than getting the original release. I think people are going to be okay with that, if only to get their hands on that mold. And that is it. That is so much. We're almost half an hour into this video. Do you understand why I couldn't save this for Monday? This had to be a discussion for today. It's a ton. It's an absolute ton of stuff. And keep in mind, a lot of these creators and third parties, they didn't announce or show off what exactly they're doing. They just said we're involved. So this, there's even more. There's even more. And then there's everything, though, that 40 odd figures that Hasbro mentioned. It's going to be a busy year. So, tune into this channel in order to follow all of it, which means you've got to be subscribed. you got to hit that bell. Get notified as soon as I am talking Transformers. Of course, it's every day, so all you really have to do is check in the evening after dinner. But you know what? You know, it's always appreciated. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, yeah, we got a ton of stuff to look forward to. Let me know in the comments below what you're looking forward to the most. And as always, I will see you next time.